All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this live stream from Davies Media Design. My name is Mike Davies, and in this video, we're going to be looking over GIMP 3.0. This is a GIMP 3.0 first look. Um, I opened it up a few days ago when it was released to me, and I believe GIMP officially released it today, just like an hour ago. So I have played around with it briefly, but not that much. So today is going to be the first time that all of us are really taking a deep dive into GIMP 3.0, unless of course you're a developer. But we are going to be diving in, looking at the new features that are available so far, talking about some of the things that are wrong with it that I've seen so far. So some of the bugs going on, which is totally normal because it is a development version. It is not a stable version. This is technically GIMP 2.99.2. And uh, we're also just gonna be looking at some general things like maybe what's to come in the future. Uh, because this is live, you know, definitely let me know in the comments if you guys are experiencing any issues with the stream. Let me know if you can hear me okay, if you can see my screen okay. Other than that, before we dive in here, of course, let's switch it over here to the screen. Before we get started, don't forget to check out my website, daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP tutorials and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and you can check out my free software help articles, so definitely check out the website. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. And as I, as I mentioned, you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. We're doing it live. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So if you're wondering where you can download, and I'm getting notes that everything is okay. So if you want to know where to download the latest development version of GIMP, which of course many of you do want to know that, you can go to GIMP.org and come over here to the download page. And if you scroll down, you'll see here it says, Psst, want to check out the new GIMP 2.99.2 development release. And uh, we've got a link here. Probably Pat David wrote that. That seems very Pat David-esque. Maybe not. Uh, he does manage the website. Um, anyway, so you'll see here it says this is for the development version. Again, unstable. This means it's still full of bugs. It could crash on you. I don't recommend using this version for things like important projects or for work there is the uh, possibility that it could crash and you could lose your work, etc. And some things are broken, which I'll get into. But uh, if you come down here, this is available for both Linux and Windows. Unfortunately, it is not yet available for uh, Mac versions. The GIMP team is still looking for a solid Mac developer to come in and help them uh, to you know, create the, uh, I, I'm not a developer, so I forget the exact terminology, uh, basically create the Mac download packages so that people can safely download uh, GIMP for Mac and so that they can also port all of um, GIMP stuff to GTK3 for Mac. I'm not really sure if that work is separate or if they just need somebody to make the installer, but if you're a Mac developer, definitely help out the GIMP team. They are desperately looking for Mac help and all of us would love them to get Mac help. And then when it comes to the bugs, um, GIMP does want you to report the bugs. I do it all the time. Basically what you do is, uh, what I do anyway, type in GIMP report bug into Google. And then the first link that comes up says bugs GIMP. Click on here and there's a little link that says report an issue here. When you click on it, you're gonna have to log in to GitHub. Uh, this is Genome's GitHub page. You can have a login via your uh, email account and there's some other free ways to do it. it's totally free and then you describe your issue you're having here and there are some bug templates i might do an entirely separate tutorial on how to report bugs because i'm just briefly going through it right now uh, but this is how you would report a bug if you are experiencing a bug while using this which is exactly what the GIMP team wants you to do so let me just exit out of all this st <clears throat> stuff i'm losing my voice so here it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is GIMP 3.0, or at least this is a very preliminary version of it. Let me know if everything is going all right for you guys over there in the stream. But this is the very first look at GIMP 3.0. This is GIMP 2.99.2. And as you can see here, the UI is pretty much totally redone. 
I already saw some people asking me in the comments if the UI was redone, so the answer to that obviously is yes. And right now the UI is actually kind of limited. So GTK has a system theme or a default theme that it uses, and that includes the colors of uh, the background area, you know, the main workspace, as well as the icons and some of the slider bars, etc. So GIMP has not set up a default theme yet. That is something that they would like the community to help them out with. That also inc uh, includes help with the color icons. So let me switch back here. So right now, these are sort of the default icons. These are just like the flat one color icons. I don't ever use these actually because they're kind of hard to differentiate from one another. So it can be kind of annoying. But <clears throat> they have asked for community help. You do not have to be a developer to help design these icons. So I would definitely look into helping the GIMP team with those icon designs. But this is the new uh, UI look for GTK3 and therefore for GIMP 3.0. So a couple of things I want to point out right off the bat is obviously just the uh, theme. The dark theme is going to be a slightly different color. And you can see here the sliders I was just talking about are going to be this bright blue by default. So GIMP says they don't really like this particularly. They don't like this blue color, so they do want to change this. But this is what runs with GTK by default. And you can also see that when a layer is highlighted, it's now highlighted with this very bright blue. And some other things with the UI. So for example, I think this right here is a mistake. Um, I think this is a bug maybe. You can see this is aligned to the left instead of center aligned. I don't know if they meant to do this, if this is just part of the default, uh, but this doesn't look great to me. So I think this is probably a bug. But when I click on here, they do have a new layout, a new look for the actual color picker. Uh, this is for the foreground color dialog box here. You can see it is a bit more on the flat side. I actually like this. Um, it is a bit more crisp in terms of, you know, the edges of everything and there's a bit more spacing. The spacing's a bit better at least. And overall, this to me just looks more modern. You can click through here and see how each area looks inside of here. And as usual, you could switch between LCH and HSV. Um, so yeah, this looks better to me. And You'll see you could still have the ability to select from the color swatches. Now, instead of having an arrow to add a new color, you have a plus sign. So that's just like a minor tweak they have there. And so I'll exit out of here. You'll also see that down here in the tabs, the tabs are now a bit cleaner looking. The spacing is just a bit better. The icons are a bit more crisp. Same with up top here. And you could see the thumbnails for these look better, so the thumbnails are now a bit more crisp and they have a bit of spacing between them. So these are just slightly different and as usual I would assume, I haven't tried this yet, but you can, yeah, you can increase the size of the thumbnails. So they do look a bit better. Before they looked a bit outdated and messy. That was a big thing a lot of people were telling me about was, you know, the UI needs to be updated desperately in GIMP. It just looks way too old. So it does appear that they have added a brand new look to the UI, which I very much like. Something else is you could see when I hover over the uh, little scroll bars here, they actually highlight when you hover over them. And in some cases they enlarge. I forget exactly where I saw that. Uh, maybe I'll come across it again later. But you can see when I hover my mouse over these, they highlight and when I click on them, they change colors to blue. And you can see the little navigator down here it looks a bit better as well now. It's got a little navigator icon instead of sort of a confusing almost move tool looking icon. And I'm just going to review my notes here and check out the comments, see what we got going on. Let me switch over to my camera. I just want to make sure that I'm covering all the new features I want to cover here. And something else I forgot to mention is that there is a new splash screen. So once you guys download and install GIMP and you open it up for the first time, you'll see that new Zen Wilbur splash screen. I'll let you guys see that on your own. It's a really cool splash screen. I believe it was done by Ariam who does the Z Marmot project. Uh, so definitely did a good job there. And uh, something else is if I go to edit, Preferences, and actually let me switch back over to my screen. So if I go to Edit, Preferences, 
Hopefully that'll pop up, there it goes. So if I come over here to interface and I go to theme, you'll see right now, as I mentioned, this only includes the system theme, which is the default GTK theme. They are looking to create uh, other default GIMP themes and they want community help from that. But you'll see here there is a checkbox for use dark theme variant if available. So when I uncheck that now, what used to happen is the icons would stay the same color, but now they automatically switch over. So they're going to automatically switch over to darker icons, making it easier to see those icons. And then if I want to switch back, I can just check that box and they will switch back. So we'll cover some of uh, the other features as we continue moving through this in terms of the UI. Uh, but something else I want to try, which I actually haven't tried yet, so this is this will be me trying for the first time, is going to be um, plugging in a peripheral device like a Wacom tablet. And guys, let me know if you could still see the stream here. Just want to make sure that we're still good to go. Uh, but I believe. Uh, What's going to happen now, at least according to GIMP, is when you plug in external input devices such as the Wacom tablet, uh, this is going to now automatically start working the second you plug it in, or it should be close to working, um, versus before you had to close GIMP out and reopen it. So let me get this going. i got to unplug my mouse here. Let's plug in this. This is the first time I've done this, so I don't really know if this works or not. Let's get this bad boy plugged in. So supposedly it's doing something. Let's go back to the screen here. Supposedly this should start working fairly immediately. So it does appear. So my computer's got it started up there. And let me just hit the P key. Whoops. Let's come over here. Let me change this here, so we'll go to Edit Preferences. I really don't usually use the flat icon, so I get lost when I'm using these. So let's go to the icon theme, and we can go to Color. Click OK. There we go. All right, so let's go with the Paintbrush tool. And one thing that I've noticed that we'll talk about is that the tool groups don't really appear to work. And actually, all right. I'm trying to, there we go, use the shortcut key. There it is. Okay, the shortcut key for the uh, paintbrush tool there, which was not wanting to cooperate. Uh, so let's create a new layer, and we're just going to test if this works out. So yeah, this tablet does work out now uh, immediately. I don't know if the dynamics work. Let's see if the dynamics work right off the bat. We can go with basic dynamics. So yeah, those actually work right out of the gate just by plugging that in. And so when I speed it up, it looks thinner. When I slow it down, it's a little bit fatter there. So those dynamics do appear to work. So that actually looks like it is working right now. And uh, that is one of the brand new features found in GIMP 3.0. And that's called hot plug support, by the way. Uh, that is, you know, a, a certain type of um, feature inside a GIMP where whenever you just plug in a new input device, it'll recognize it immediately instead of having to close everything down and reopen it. I'm actually going to unplug this now and switch back over to the regular mouse. All right, so let's move on to another feature that I'm actually super excited for. Let's come over here uh, to the thumbnail design I did for this video. And you'll see when I'm in here, over here on the right side, you can now select multiple layers inside of GIMP. So this is going to be a new feature they introduced in GIMP 3.0. You can use it here inside of the development version. And basically what this allows you to do, obviously, instead of just having to select one layer at a time, which was the old behavior. 
Now if I shift click, that's going to allow me to select all of the layers in between the first uh, layer that I had selected and the last layer I had selected. So in this case, we have seven layers selected. You can see it says right there, seven items selected. And of course I can select all the layers in here. So there you'll see it says 12 items selected. That's gonna come in handy in a variety of ways. So let me demonstrate one way. Uh, for example, let me shift click on these three layers. Let's say I wanted to add a layer mask to the three of these. And actually I think this one already has a layer mask. Oh, this is actually, so that might be a little bit of a glitch there. If I shift click on these three, yeah, so shift click is a shortcut key to basically add the layer mask using the previous settings uh, to a layer. So basically there's a bug right now that's going to have to be reported. I'll report it after this video uh, where when you shift click to select multiple layers, it actually also adds a layer mask automatically to that first layer. So that's not the behavior that we want to see out of that. But that's uh, where we're at right now with this development version. Uh, however, if I wanted to add a layer mask to this, I can come over here to the bottom of the layer mask panel and click. That's going to allow me to add a layer mask, a white layer mask here. So now when I click add, you'll see that all three of these now have a layer mask. Uh, these two in particular have the same layer mask and this one already had one. So that was just kind of that uh, glitch there, that that bug, but that's one use case for this. Another one, let's say you have a bunch of layers and you wanna add them to a layer group. So let's just name this uh, 3.0 text layers. Hit the answer key. So now if I wanted to add all of the layers that contain the 3.0 text elements, I can, let's shift click on these Four, and then click and drag all of them into the layer group and release. And there you'll see now all four of these are inside the layer group and actually the text background layer shouldn't be in here. So I'm gonna drag that out like so. But there you can see it's a quick way to add all those layers into the layer group. So as of right now, uh, selecting multiple layers you cannot uh, use things like paint tools on these. So if you try to shift click on uh, all five of these right here, and then I grab something like the paintbrush tool, which I already have. If I try to paint on all these, uh, you'll see it's just gonna give me this error message that says it cannot paint on multiple layers. So that's something that does not work right now. I don't know if they're really planning on having that work uh, in the future or what the importance is of a paint feature like that not super important to me, so I don't think that that priority should be placed super high. However, uh, filters do not work on multiple layers as well. You can still only use those Gecko filters on one layer at a time. I could see that having some use down the road, um, but that is currently not a feature and that could potentially complicate the code, so I'm not sure how beneficial that would be versus you know, how many crashes or bugs or how much developer time that would take up. Um, as a result of a feature like that. But something that does actually occur with multiple layers, which I haven't tested out yet, but according to the documentation, so let me shift click on these three. Supposedly the transformation tools now will work on multiple layers. So let's grab the rotate tool and rotate, and we'll hit rotate. So it should rotate all three of those layers. Hopefully it won't freeze up. Yeah, so it did rotate all three of those layers simultaneously, which is really cool. I do wanna note that you could use the little link, the chain link icon or the transform lock uh, to lock all of these together and then rotate them all and they would all rotate together. So that was a feature that was already in GIMP technically, but now it's just gonna work a different way, probably more intuitive to new users where you can just select all of these simultaneously and then rotate them. And that's kind of how you would expect that behavior to work. But I think overall that um, having multiple layers be able to be selected simultaneously is actually a pretty rudimentary feature in my opinion. It's something that I think should have been in GIMP long ago. However, because GIMP has so much code in it and adding new features like that, especially with layers where a lot of uh, core actions inside of GIMP happen around layers, they, it can become super complicated to just go in and make uh, simple 
you know, features added such as, uh, or simple actions added such as selecting multiple layers simultaneously because there are a lot of things that can come from selecting layers simultaneously and a lot of things you gotta work out like which effects can go on these uh, multiple selected layers simultaneously. Uh, how does that affect already shortcuts that are there? Like for example, that shift key that's going to add the last layer mask options to that layer you have selected. So there's a lot of things to work out and that's why I think it's taking so long for a game to get a pretty rudimentary feature such as selecting multiple layers like you see here. And one note that I forgot to mention about the tablet, the Wacom tablet, they are not really working on touch support. So, you know, things like gestures you do with your finger on the uh, pad itself, on the tablet itself, that's not really a priority to the GIMP team. So I wouldn't expect that anytime soon with GIMP. I don't know if they're ever going to introduce that, but it is something they mentioned that they're not really working on right now. So Wayland support is supposed to be coming for Linux users. It's sort of there now, but it's not quite there. So be patient with the Wayland support. They've also improved the core code and programming inside of GIMP. So those of you who are developers or even plugin developers, it should be easier now to work with GIMP when it comes to designing plugins for GIMP. That's not something that I have a lot of knowledge in, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that subject. But there was one interesting thing that came out of that news, which is that uh, they've made improvements to something called plugin declaration. Again, this has to do with developers creating plugins for GIMP. But the reason it affects end users is that uh, this feature sounds to me like it may be a step towards Photoshop actions or an equivalent to Photoshop actions inside of GIMP. I guess we'd call it GIMP actions. Uh, I'm not really sure if that is going to be the end goal of this feature. But basically from what I read, it sounds like it's going to allow uh, plugin developers to record actions. And I believe if you are going to be recording actions, that means you can essentially play those actions back at another time, which is basically how Photoshop actions work. You record your actions as a Photoshop action. And then when you're working at a later time in a different composition, you then basically press play on those actions you took and those actions play out on whatever composition you're working on. So it creates a very easy way to just automate your workflow and do certain edits automatically. I don't know if that's where they're going with that. To me though, that's how I interpreted that. It did sound like that could potentially be the direction it's heading in. So uh, Space Invasion is sort of like their secret code word for uh, better color management that they're working on. That's another technical side of things. And I think I'm gonna wait to expand on that as more information comes out about it. They also have uh, new render caching, which is supposed to speed up GIMP's performance. And you know, based on what I've seen in my tests inside of GIMP 3.0 currently, I actually haven't noticed that much improvement in the performance, the uh, speed performance here. And just double checking that we're on the camera still. Um, so I, you know, for example, when I used the foreground tool, it was still pretty slow on the original sized image I used to create my thumbnail, which was only like 2000, yeah, 2000 by 2500. So not that big of an image, but the foreground select tool was still pretty slow to work there. Hopefully uh, these, uh, speed improvements such as render caching can help to make GIMP a bit more competitive in terms of its performance uh, versus things like Photoshop and Affinity Photo. Uh, but they have introduced that, so I think that's a good step in the right direction. And then um, something that I think, and let's see if there's anything else I need to cover before I get to this feature, because this is going to be my favorite feature here, the most promising feature in my opinion. Um, obviously, I know some of you guys are thinking about uh, like layer adjustments. Um, that's that's probably, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen in GIMP, well, we know it's not gonna happen in GIMP 3.0, it's gonna happen in GIMP 3.2. So if you're looking for adjustment layers, that's not gonna come in GIMP 3.0 or be available right now for testing. That's gonna be after they release GIMP 3.0 and then 3.2 is gonna come out with some updates, bug fixes, etc. Hopefully that's when they come out with adjustment layers or a similar feature to that, but you know, don't expect it anytime soon. But the um, other feature that I wanna mention here is going to be something called the Extensions Manager. This is something I mentioned a long time ago when 
I think around GIMP 2.10 came out, so a few years ago now, they had mentioned with GIMP 3.0 they wanted to create something called extensions. This is actually a very exciting concept. I don't even think Adobe, I mean, they sort of use it with the Creative Cloud thing, so it's very similar to that, except uh, this cloud with GIMP or this extension manager is going to connect GIMP users to all other GIMP users. Um, so there's going to be a place where GIMP users can upload their own brushes, their own patterns, um, you know, their own plugins, and GIMP users are going to be able to easily add those extensions to their GIMP directly from inside a GIMP. So let me show you what I'm talking about because they did actually already sort of set up the basis for that. So I can actually access this by going to Edit, Manage Extensions, and here you'll see this is going to be the Extensions Manager. It looks very small right now and unassuming because there's not really anything in here. It'll probably look more like this once it's done. And for example, if I come to System Extensions, you can see they've got something called Goat Exercises in here. This is, I believe, just like a test of the Extension Management System. But this is what it's gonna be like is, you know, they're gonna have things like brushes, patterns, and other assets available in here. And you can just come over here and turn them on or off to add them into GIMP. So if I go to install extensions, there's nothing in here, but presumably in the future, there's gonna be a bunch of options in here and you can just scroll through them and turn one off, turn one on, whatever, and probably gonna be fonts in here as well. So this to me has a ton of promise and I think this actually does make GIMP very competitive with those premium programs like uh, Adobe Photoshop. There are some other things GIMP needs to do, of course, to become more competitive. Uh, GIMP is already very competitive with, you know, uh, photo editors, especially at the beginner level, intermediate level. To me, it's actually just like that 0.99%, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that 0.1% or maybe the top 1% of extra features that Adobe has over GIMP right now, but GIMP has a majority of Adobe's features and even other premium programs like Affinity. I'll get into that in another video. But this will, I think, be very awesome for the GIMP community and it'll allow a quick way for GIMP users to access uh, extra features, extensions, plugins, brushes, other assets, etc. You guys get the point there. And one last thing I will mention is uh, something like smart objects. That's not currently available inside of GIMP 3.0. Um, they have mentioned that that is something they're gonna work on. They have called it linked layers. I have an article on my website about linked layers and how it is similar to smart objects. There wasn't any update with this 2.99.2 release in terms of when that was gonna come out. Uh, if it was gonna come out with this version or a different one, I'm hoping it's gonna come out with this but you never know, some things take a bit longer inside of GIMP. And let's see, I'm getting some comments here. It looks more clean. Uh, yeah, it definitely does. Um, Victor is asking if I created the thumbnail live. I did not create the thumbnail live. I did that ahead of time. Everything worked fine for me though. I did not have any, well, actually that's not true. There are a couple things I'm about to cover that did not go very well. Uh, when it came to creating this, but for the most part, it didn't crash or anything. Um, and yes, yeah, somebody uh, <laughs> disobeyed Toast, interesting name there, but it's uh, he or she said, the real issue is that GIMP needs more funding and developers. That is actually very true. GIMP does need more developers, and in order to have more developers, they need more funding. Uh, I recommend personally, if you're gonna donate to GIMP developers, donate directly to their Patreon pages. Uh, Ariam and uh, Yehan, I think his name is pronounced, from Zimarmit, they have their own Patreon page. Uh, Oyvind also has his own Patreon page. So a lot of the uh, GIMP developers who need the money and spend a lot of time working in GIMP have their own pages. You can donate directly to Genome and tell them that the donation is for GIMP. However, in my opinion, um, you know, you can do it that way, but I do recommend doing Patreon. It just, you already know it's going directly to those uh, uh, developers and they kind of let you know personally what they're working on. GIMP has a page for how to donate as well as, you know, where you can donate. They have links to everything on their main page, so definitely check that out. 
Uh, somebody's asking if there was a non-destructive layer system like Adobe Photoshop. Uh, as I just mentioned, they do not have adjustment layers yet. There are some non-destructive features in GIMP, but they have not introduced those non-destructive layers, uh, those adjustment layers. So let's move on to what I have discovered is currently wrong with GIMP uh, 2.99.2. I'm going to report these as bugs on the bug reporting page, which I covered at the beginning of this. You can always rewind once this is done and check out how to report bugs. Uh, but there's a couple of things I noticed. For example, the first thing I've already pointed out here, let me go back to my screen, is that the color swatches are aligned to the left, at least on my computer. That to me is, it's got to be a bug. Uh, I don't know why they would do that. It doesn't look great. I would assume that could have something to do with the GTK default system theme there. Um, but another bug I noticed is, and this is probably the second biggest issue I've found so far. Uh, again, I haven't spent much time in here, so I haven't discovered everything that's wrong with it. But uh, not that I'm looking for a bunch of things wrong with it, but... If I create a free selection area and hit the enter key, of course we have the uh, you know standard marching ants. You can see that as I move my mouse across the page, across the image, the marching ants are like flickering or twitching. I don't think, I mean, that's that shouldn't happen. Uh, and if I continue to move my mouse around, it, it disappears sometimes. So that's, that's not standard behavior that should be happening with that. So that to me is definitely a bug that needs to be fixed. And to me, it's just very annoying and it makes it look like it's broken. I'll hit control shift A on that. Uh, something else I noticed is broken. This is probably my number one thing is that the tool groups are broken. So um, let's see if it'll, yeah. So it's, it's fine with the, um, this color mode I have set up right now the color icon theme. So I can click and hold and it allows me to select uh, the tools there. But if I go to edit preferences, of course it's probably gonna work fine now. And by the way, that takes a bit longer than it used to. So that might be something to look into as well. But in the preferences here under icon theme, when I go to symbolic, I'll click okay. Let's see if it's still gonna be broken or not. Nope, of course it's gonna work now. Uh, but for me earlier, the tool uh, groups were not working by default, but it's working fine now. So um, I'll have to look into that and see if I can recreate that. Uh, another thing from earlier, again, don't know if it's going to break on me now, but it did earlier, or at least it didn't work as intended. So you guys know from watching my tutorials, when you create a new layer, so let's name this background too. Before, if I hit the enter key, it would automatically create that new layer. Right now, nothing's happening. So you do have to come over here and click OK. And I just noticed this as well, actually. That's a new one, which is if I had multiple layers selected and then created a new layer, it created the number of layers I had selected as new layers. So now we have three new layers on here. So that is something they, they're they going to have to fix for sure. And I believe that was that's all I've discovered so far in terms of bugs. I'm sure I'll come across a few more. And yeah, I mean, this is a development version, so there are going to be bugs on here. And let's see. So I did close out where to report bugs. But um, yeah, if you guys are working inside of GIMP and you stumble across bugs, I do recommend reporting them directly to the GIMP team using their bug reporting features, which again, I covered earlier in this tutorial. It does help out with the development of GIMP. It helps them speed up the process of finding those bugs and you know getting rid of those bugs. And as long as they're not too bogged down in the bugs, it, it will speed things up and help them move on to new features. Don't worry about bogging them down with the bugs. I mean, it, it's gotta happen anyway. You know, the bugs need to be fixed. So don't feel shy about reporting those bugs. And you know, right now, at least it seems like there's not too many bugs. There's just a few ones. Uh, and then once they get those bugs fixed, they can again, release that stable version. One last thing I wanna say before I let you guys go is uh, you know, the timeline for when this is gonna come out. Uh, earlier versions of GIMP, so GIMP 2.10, for example, had GIMP 2.9 before they released GIMP 2.10. And they did have several of these unstable development release versions before they released the release candidate versions. So don't get your hopes up too much. It's not probably going to go directly from this first GIMP 2.99.2 right to 3.0. I would assume there's going to be 
three, four, maybe five development versions first, maybe more. And, uh, you know, once they get things to where they think it's working pretty smoothly and they have most of the stuff worked out, then they're going to do a release candidate, which is what they usually do, release candidate one. They'll probably finalize some bugs from that, do a release candidate two, and then they're going to uh, finally do the stable release, which is GIMP 3.0. I don't really know when that's going to happen. It's been about two years and change since GIMP 2.10 first came out. We're on GIMP 2.10.22. Coming up next is going to be GIMP 2.10.24. I don't know how many of those versions they're going to do before they move on to 3.0. And, you know, they could do more than two release candidate versions. They could not do any. I think it really just depends on how well it's working based on the development versions and everybody's feedback. So basically be patient. I mean, it, it took, I think the point I was getting at is it took about eight years to get GIMP 2.10 out. They did say they're planning on never taking that long again to get major release versions out, but you never know. I mean, I don't think it's going to be eight years. I would hope, I mean, I've made predictions before about 3.0 that were way off. I would hope maybe one and two years from now, 3.0 will be out. They will still be releasing new GIMP versions in the meantime, so it's not like there's going to be no new versions of GIMP between that period and, uh, or I'm sorry, between now and that period. Uh, so I'm going to check out the comments here real quick before I let you guys go. CMYK, uh, I've been told basically that CMYK is not a priority with GIMP. They firmly believe because so many people are moving away from print that it's not really you know, a huge feature that they want to dump a bunch of time into because it does take a while to get CMYK up and running. They say that, I mean, Krita already has CMYK support, although Krita is a much simpler program on the photo editing and manipulation side of things. It's more of a painting program. But GIMP has already told me personally, I mean directly, that CMYK is not a big priority and they're thinking about just tossing CMYK entirely. So yeah, everything that's on the web is RGB, so I think they're planning on working, uh, keeping things in RGB. Does it have AI? Um, I haven't heard anything about GIMP having AI. That would be a cool thing for them to implement, especially with selection tools. I know that they want to work on selection tools more. That's something they kind of have put off for a long time because the last developer that worked on selection tools for a long time accidentally lost all of his work. So they haven't really readdress selections in a long time. I know that there was a desire to revisit selections sometime in the near future. Hopefully that happens. Um, extensions are brilliant. Yeah, I agree with that. Don't forget, guys, you guys can donate via the Super Chat, um, but I'm just going to try to scroll through the rest of these. Hello from Nairobi. Thanks for joining. Getting a lot of comments about the UI looking clean. Uh, Dark Soldier says videos are useful. Thank you very much. Uh, where am I? I'm in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so I think that's pretty much it for your guys' comments here. I'm not seeing anything too specific question-wise. But guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Design. Of course, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of this video. But thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.